Jamie song? Yeah. Jamie song. Ooh. Alpo. I meant to do that. Dumbass. So what do you do after that? This is my house. My name's Cody. I've got a wife, a kid, a mortgage, and a growing collection of plastic garbage cans. The middle class American's dream. Well, maybe not the middle class, but the upper end of the lower middle. You get the idea. That's our babysitter. She's very popular with the high school groping crowd. She's got a fever blister, so it's gonna be a slow night. Hey, we're getting ready for a party. Why don't you come on in? God, I miss those days. Honey, I'm home. Hurry up and get dressed. Nobody has parties anymore. Yes, they do. They just don't invite us. Well, we're not missing this one. Get dressed. That's my wife, Judy. With her, everything has to be an event. She thinks this party's a career move. I'm only going because I'm out of bourbon. I just want to get out of the house. You went out with your sister last night. And going out with Sarah is about as much fun as a barrel of dead monkeys. They're the only ones we see anymore. Our entire social life consists of brothers, sisters, in-laws. It's so nice to really go out. This is big, Cody. It's not that big, Judy. We should be proud to be invited to a party at Elizabeth Sheridan's. I don't trust people who press their blue jeans. Oh, hurry up. I don't want to be late. The later we are, the more important we look, Come right? Come on! <laughs> Tito, give me a tissue. Are you listening to me? These are exactly the kind of people you need to be associated with, not those weird, creative types you hang around. But Judy, these people are assholes. Fine. Then just grin and bear it. Oh, and go easy on your drinking. Go easy on everything. Don't be rude, obnoxious, loud, nasty. You've just eliminated my entire personality. Try. Mike O'Malley is the only reason we're invited to this thing. You're always bragging about how close you are to Elizabeth Sheridan. I know you're crazy about her. You talk about her in your sleep. That's as close as I'll ever get to being in bed with her. What? Nothing, honey. Nothing. Are you ever gonna fix this damn faucet? Yeah. Oh, right. Like you're gonna fix the lawnmower, the dishwasher, the brakes on my car. If I waited for you to fix things around here, I'd be geriatric. I thought you were agnostic. 
You may think you're funny, and God may think you're funny, but I don't think you're funny. And you've got to live with me. Understand? Yikes, I'll fix it. If Elizabeth Sheridan's plumbing needed fixing, you'd do it in a second. Mmm, Elizabeth's plumbing. <laughs> they seem like classy people. Classy? They gargle before and after sex with Perrier. Sometimes I don't understand you. You'd scare me away if you did. Just get dressed like I told you. Oh, and act like I told you. Let's just go and have fun. Just tell me when. Ta-da! Where's your tie? I'm not wearing one. It's a party. Everybody else will be. It's OK. I called Jerry and asked him what to wear. What? You never do that. I asked him what to wear. So what? You don't ask. Always assume coat and tie. It's much more acceptable to be overdressed than to be too casual. It's more sophisticated. Idiot. She means phony. Sophisticated is just a complicated fake. Look it up. I do the coat and tie thing five days a week. If you're so worried about impressing these friends of yours, I suggest you listen to my advice. I'm not worried about impressing anybody. You are. I could care less. I'm wearing this. I don't think so. You've got to look like one of them, even if you aren't. Make a good impression. A wise man once said, I am what I am, and that's all that I am. I'm going to have a good time, whether or not my clothes are approved by the Junior League. I'm sorry, Cody. I just want things to go right. OK, so she's right about two things. One, I'm scared to death. And two, I think Elizabeth Sheridan is a beautiful color in an otherwise drab world. Maybe it's love, maybe it's lust. Lucky for me, I don't know the difference. I hope you put the top up. Who are you talking to? What do you mean Esperanza can't come? We have to have her. Well, my party will be ruined without an ethnic hostess. Hello? Hello? Jerry, the little Mexican girl won't work tonight. Her mother said she's afraid of you. Something about muy peligroso. What does she mean? Who knows? She said something about you and Esperanza in the jacuzzi with a guava, chasing the girl with some kind of tropical fruit. Now, just exactly what does that mean? I don't practice Santeria. She's very religious, Liz. Well, we have to have a hostess. I have people out there. What am I going to do? Speak with an accent and bend over a lot? You're disgusting. Well, we'll just have to make do somehow. Are the Cornish hens still in the oven? Oh, shit. You did it! I did! You forgot? Oh, shit! Oh, God, Jerry, you are no help at all! Calm, blue, ocean. Calm, blue, ocean. Okay, I'm fine. You just uh, go check on the baby, and uh, hey, black and food is very fashionable these days. Da no, Daniel, no, no! <laughs> now what? Daniel uh, destroyed your pate. At least I, I think that's pate all over. Hmm. Hmm. 
Hello, Cody, Judy. I'm so glad you could come. Hi. Did you have any trouble finding us? No, we just looked for the beamers. Of course. You look fabulous. And Cody looks nice, too. I look like the east end of a westbound horse, but you in the Gata de Vida, baby. Oh. You look perfect. Oh, well, thank you, I think. I can't wait to see the house. Hey, watch out. In two minutes, you'll have your repainting. Well, I'm not sure it's ready to be seen by a professional interior designer, but it's coming along. Professional doesn't mean you're any good at something. It just means you get paid. Look that up, too. I'm sure I'll be very impressed. I know I am. Oh, here. Here, this is for the happy couple and future litigants. Ooh. Open it. Go ahead, you make the presentation. Mikey prides himself on his gourmet tastes. How nice. I bet he'll be overwhelmed. Well, I'm sure it will be received in the same spirit in which it was given. <laughs> Let's go meet everybody. Great. Quietly. Must be a costume party. We all came dressed as accountants. This is Mrs. Ledbetter. She takes care of our son, Daniel. Mrs. Ledbetter, this is Judy and Cody McKenzie. They're friends of Mike and Jenny. Mm -hmm. And Jerry and myself, of course. It's a pleasure, Mrs. Ledbetter. Of course, dear. You look lovely. And uh, is this your husband? Yes, and a part-time gardener. Nice to meet you, Mrs. Bedwetter. Yes. Bedwetter. I've never heard that before. I understand. Do you work with Elizabeth? No, I'm just one of her worshippers. What do you do, dear? I'm a proctologist. A physician? That's odd. Why would an engineering company need a proctologist? Because I work with a bunch of assholes. That's mm -hmm. not funny. Mm-hmm. This, I, I think I'll go check on the baby. So happy to meet both of you. Do enjoy yourself. If you ruin this for me, Cody. And there's Mike, our guest of honor. Dead man walking. Oh, welcome to the ranks of the living dead. And the deadly living. Uh, she's supposed to hug me and you're supposed to shake my hand. I'm just touching my feminine side. You don't touch it too much. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh. oh, I'm so happy for both of you. Oh, be happy for me. I'm getting the best of the deal. Where is Jenny? Well, she's around here somewhere. You know, Cody, you're not fooling anybody with that suit. I thought I was coming to a party, not a financial seminar. Come on, meet some of my friends. OK, which one? I'm going to go find a little girl's room. Here's one you'll remember. Oh, yeah. Lisa Casey, she used to work for the fish. I know. I used to have an entry-level position working under her. You I wish. Be careful what I wish for. I just might get it. Lisa's in business for herself now. I can imagine. What a product line. You'd never know. <laughs> ah! What? My hand. There's no glass in it. <laughs> this requires immediate attention. Where's the bar? It's that way. But I figure you could find it in the dark. I could turn the lights out and feel my way around. Anything you want can be found in the kitchen. He hasn't changed one bit. He's still an asshole. Robinson. 
Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Just calm down. Cody and Max got nuts. <laughs> Judy don't. You are gonna lose a nut if you don't stop it. Okay. Now please, just just straighten up. Ooh, this is straight up. I'm loops. <laughs> Hi, Barbie. Call me Kim. Please. Jenny! Jenny! Oh, Jenny! Looks like you've got company. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Jenny! Oh, Jenny! That fool has no business here. And you stay away from him. I heard that, Roland. Mwah! A taste of money, you look gorgeous. Child, you got good taste. Congratulations on this marriage thing, but uh, I wouldn't do it. I mean, having done it, I wouldn't repeat it. Just say no. Cody, what are you talking about? I admire your persistence, but honestly, in all the sincerity I have to offer, which isn't much, and I am totally sincere about this, I have never seen you looking lovelier. My compliments. Thanks, Cody. This uh, monogamous ritual must really agree with you. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Ooh, just say yes and I'm yours from my webbed feet to my very realistic hair weave and all points in between, including my cute little tushy. <laughs> Cody, you hardly have one. <laughs> all my bigness is in the front. It's not wasted in the back. <laughs> right, Judy? <laughs> Mike and Jenny. Can I please have everyone's attention? Ladies, gentlemen, friends, co-workers. I would like to make a toast to my dearest friends, Mike and Jenny. I've known one as long as I've known the other. And together, they're already one in my eyes. What would Mike be without Jenny? Mike what would Jenny be without Mike? As a CPA, I know when things add up. And you're one lucky man, Michael O'Malley. Can I have my pants back, please? Oh my god, how embarrassing. Look at him, he's trashed. I noticed. Think you could bring him down a few decibels? Impossible. I mean, I've tried for years. Once he gets wound up, there is no telling what he will say or do. You know what I like about Cody? What you see is what you get. He'll just go on being laughing boy. That's what Jenny calls him. Well, that's exactly what he is. A little boy trying too hard to get attention. Always being sent to the principal's office. If I have any advice, it is... Spank him. No, he'd like that too much. Sometimes a day without Cody is like a month in paradise. I think I'll spank him anyway. Excuse me, Liz. Oh, May Joe's here. Good. Maybe something will go as planned. Who? Elizabeth invited Mary Jo Wagstaff from the Bible Network as entertainment for the evening. Why? Cody. Cody! Cody. <gasps> Hello, Mary Jo! Oh, Lizzie! Oh, oh, you look precious! You do oh, too. Hello, Elizabeth. Bobby Jo. How are you? Oh, oh. 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 party and it's so nice of you to have me now that you're here will be had instead mm, pardon i don't believe we've met i saw your show last night you're mary joe wagstaff the hotline to heaven bless you dear i hope you're uplifted my lunch was uplifted you really expect people to believe all that shit i beg your pardon don't beg it belittles you i'll give it to you for nothing the coma the out-of-body experience the miracles oh please yeah uh, mary joe i'm sorry i must have missed that one maybe i'll hear about it later oh don't get her started i would love to tell you about it this boy could benefit from religion amen hallelujah what would a televangelist know about religion as i was about to say 
I was fist in the little hometown where I was born. Bethlehem? Hope, Arkansas. There is no hope for Arkansas. I was there with my husband, my parents, and my sister when suddenly I was stricken with this terrible, terrible sickness. Acne vulgaris? I had never been sick a day in my life, and I knew right then and there the Almighty was testing me. Maybe it was the potato salad. We had to call Dr. Birchler. <sighs> Binky. He delivered me when I was born. Was UPS on strike? <laughs> I am trying to turn the other cheek, young man. Imagine the energy it would take to move it just an inch. What an idiot. Who invited that fool? Binky diagnosed my sickness as acute appendicitis. In fact, it had burst while I lay there moaning in bed. Probably for the first time in your married life. Dr. Benke called the hospital 60 miles away. My condition was serious. I broke out in a rash. Bile and acid were building up in my throat, choking me. I gagged, I wrenched, and then I began to, I began to bloat and swell. Was that you I saw floating over Shea Stadium? They had to move me to a bigger hospital in a bigger town. That is some serious swelling. So when we got to Texarkana, another doctor examined me. He said they must operate immediately. By this time, I was bleeding, sweating, talking nonsense and raving uncontrollably. While my temperature exceeded 105, I saw double. I shook and vomited all over the bed. An accurate description of her studio audience. He ordered immediate surgery. They gutted me like a fish, but the disease had already poisoned my body. What's taking it so long? The pain became so great. The pain became so great. The pain became so great. Oh my God. <laughs> Poor thing. Be brave, Mother. It's okay, Bobby Joe. Oh, this is so hard for me. I'm sorry. The pain became so great that I sank into a deep, deep coma. Listen, my children, you can hear in a coma. You mean even the comatose aren't safe? I heard everything. Strange music came to me at night. Elvis again. I heard the word of God, he said. Shut up. <laughs> For 40 days and 40 nights, I lay there. The wind was left open so the poison could drain from my tortured body. I lost weight, as you can see. And in my delirium, I chewed up my pillow and I bit my bedpan. <laughs> when I finally came out of that dreadful, dreadful coma, I realized I was... I realized I was pregnant and I had somehow broken my hip as well. <laughs> God was testing me. You almost got me. He bit me, but I didn't snap. He was preparing me for television, the ultimate and broadest all-reaching instrument for deliverance of his divine message. Hallelujah. And here I am today in perfect health. Thank you, Jesus to tell others he has a plan for all of us. Plan nine from outer space. His cosmic word, love. Praise the Lord. Oh, so you know John Lennon too. It's all in my new book. Only $14.95 at Better Bookstores. I, I think I'll wait for the movie.
Creatures big and small, no sin is too great. No thanks, I'll wait. But hey, thanks for the free revival. Follow the Golden Arches to Mary Jo's McJesus drive through for a divine Happy Meal communion. <laughs> the tin McNuggets, a small wine, and a plastic crucifix that glows in the dark. <laughs> Salvation to go. Would you like fries with that? Are you Mrs. Laughing Boy? Uh, yes. And thank you so much for inviting us. I love the house. I love that dress. Uh, no wonder Cody's always in such a good mood. You must keep him awfully happy. We get along. Listen, why don't you let me show you the backyard? It's uh, very beautiful this time. Actually, I thought I'd have another glass of wine, which I hope is not as flat as your come on. When you've had enough, come see me. I really like that dress. I think I'll go say hello to your wife. Same, just different. <laughs> Where are your glasses? I had that uh, laser surgery. Oh yeah, radical karaoke. <laughs> Great party, huh? Is Elizabeth a sweetheart? A sweetheart? My God, she's a fantasy. I dream of being married to her, having a little cottage out in the hills, and I'd come home from a long day out in the fields, just beat to hell. And there she is at the door, smiling sweetly with the delicious apple pie she just baked herself, wearing only her little ruffled apron and no panties. I heard through Radio O'Malley that you're getting married too. Yeah, well, as of yesterday, it's on hold. Mike said it was a done deal. It's just not working out. We can't seem to agree on anything and I can't make up my mind. So who is this confused but lucky guy? That's him over there. Pratt? He's well-named. He looks like an asshole. He is. So what's the attraction? It's reasonably attractive. And to the visually handicapped? He pays attention to me. So would a puppy? Very nice. Most of the time. And? He has money. Mmm, the bottom line. How romantic. Cody... I've got to be practical. I'm 28 years old. This may be my last chance. I've made a career out of dating. I've got to look forward to the future. Settle down. Security. You're so busy worrying about the future, you're not having any fun in the present. And I need another drink. I never stop. I may not live long, but I'll live happy. Walk with me. No thanks. What's this? Cody McKenzie turning down a smoke. Shh, doctor's orders. If anyone finds out I've accepted a little responsibility, I'll be ruined. I don't believe it. Listen, Lisa, you're smart. Don't waste your life on this bean counting twit. Think about who you are and what you want. Forget about everybody else's advice and opinions. Even mine. Uh, but I'm right and you know it. I have to be logical. Mr. Spock has to be logical, not you. Logic never fell in love. This bullshit between you and Pratt is ridiculous. I mean, you talk about marriage. It's you're treating it more like a game show, mating for dollars. Don't settle for a consolation prize. Look, Cody, you can't get their life on childish ideas. Do you love him? He's dependable, stable. If you can't say it in two seconds, then it's not love. You don't have to think about it. 
just feel it. Cody, you don't understand. Men have it easy. You preach love and have your fantasies. A woman has to deal with reality. Here's someone who wants a partner in life. A business partner? Does his sight, does his touch, does his smell make you moist? Does his breath on the back of your neck turn your spine to jelly? I mean, when you think about him, do your nipples get hard? I mean, like, rock hard? Do you find yourself unable to concentrate on anything else but him? Can you describe him in colors? Do you remember details, like, like what he was wearing the first time you went out? I know how it feels. I was in love once. That's a lot of fake romantic illusion. Fantasies don't pay the bills. I'm not like you. Your kind of life scares me. I want somebody I can control, predict. Certainly sounds boring. Hell, why am I preaching? I'm no better than you. I, I don't know what I want either. You want sex, fun, and games, but you can't live on that. You don't want a relationship. Oh, please don't start laying that Men Are From Mars crap on me. OK, then. You tell me what to do, Dr. McKenzie. Don't get so smart you forget your instincts. Just, just lighten up and let things happen. If it feels right, it probably is. Just try to be more spontaneous. OK, I'll plan on being more spontaneous. Let's get back to the party. She probably wouldn't last an hour without her dayminder. I told you to stay away from him. heard. Uh, yeah, whatever. I'm fine. You know, I just had a baby a few weeks ago. Are you still lactating? Well, yes, of course. Mmm, too bad I'm lactose intolerant. Yes. You know, I had a difficult delivery. I had to have a C-section. You had a C-section, haven't you heard? Heard what? Scientists at the Burgertron Institute are working on a way to speed up the childbirth process. Instead of one woman taking nine months to do the job, they put nine women on the job and they get it over with in a month. And you have it your way. Yay! Anyway, it was devastating and my husband walked out on me. Now I'm raising little Dwina all by myself. You're kidding, right? About what? You really named your kid Dwina? Yes. Is her brother Dwayno? It sounds like Wickwood Plumber for Tiny Dwaynes. How old is your little boy? He's five. What a wonderful age. I just love little boys. I bet he's into everything. Yes, he just discovered his penis. Oh, my. Oh, he plays with it all the time. Next year, I think I'll teach him how to masturbate. Oh, my goodness. Oh, goodness has nothing to do with it. It's cheaper than Nintendo, and it teaches the same hand-eye coordination. Oh, why teach him such a nasty habit? Oh, it's not a nasty habit. It comes in handy when you're bored, and hell, it's a necessity when you're married. I knew an old lesbian once. She did it all the time. She was so tough, she jerked off with a jackhammer. She traded it in for a chainsaw, because it has more texture. Mm, that's the stuff. Have you got a picture of your son? Why, yes, I do. Yes, he, he does look like your wife. I'm pretty sure I'm the father, but I'll always wonder where he got that blonde hair. Your wife is lightheaded. I mean her hair color. She's blonde. This week. I mean, her roots are the same as mine. Well, 
I do see a little bit of you in him. I sure hope so. If there wasn't a little bit of me in her, there wouldn't be a little bit of him at all. <laughs> were you planning a family? Nope. We were just drunk and the TV was broke. Hell, I thought she was on the pill. She decided I was ready for parenthood. Luckily, I like surprises, and this is the best one I've had yet. You must be very proud. Are you planning on having more children? We've got our eyes on one of the neighbor's kids. I don't think they'll ever miss him. Would you like to see my little Dwina? She's only 10 weeks old and so beautiful. Oh, they all look alike at that age. Mm. All beautiful, of course. My God, that is the ugliest baby I have ever seen. No wonder her husband left her. Alicia gave birth to Freddy Krueger. Oh, now here's one of Duena with her new teddy bear. And, oh, and here she is, her first bath. And that's her nappy time. And, oh, here's one with a poopy time. Cody? Cody? Well, Roland, Sydney, enjoying the party? You enjoy it more if that obnoxious boar wasn't annoying everyone with his loud and tasteless babble. The man has got no class. No class at all. Cool down. I can't believe that Elizabeth lowered her standards enough to invite him. She didn't invite him. I did. He doesn't belong here. Lisa seems to like him. What does she know? She's a woman. <laughs> That's a surprising remark from such a 90s kind of guy. Forget what Lisa thinks. I'll tell her what to think. What are you going to do about that... that fool? Nothing. He upset Lisa. He filled her head with absurd ideas. He threw his... he threw his pants at me. <laughs> I know, I saw... <laughs> I... We think you should talk to him and ask him to leave. Sorry, he's got as much right to be here as you do. Oh, I for what don't agree with you. Imagine you defending that obnoxious boar. Say what you want to about him, but he's certainly no boar. Why do you defend him? He's my friend. He'd do the same for me. We're entitled to our opinion. So is he. And that seems to be what you're upset about. Don't let it get your panties in a wad. Listen, why don't you sit down, take notes, then submit a report in the morning. And you're not gonna tell him? Nope. Well, then I suppose we'll just have to speak to Elizabeth about it. Do what you have to do. It's her party. It's for Jenny and me. I'm going to enjoy it no matter what Cody says or does. Hell, he's practically the life of the party. Twits. Yeah, do you have 16 pound balls? Uh, yes, yes I do. How do you walk, man? <laughs> Excuse me. Did you fart? You must be Cody. I'm Kitty. Hi, Kitty. I'm Cody, Kitty. I'm very close to Mike and Jenny. He talks about you all the time. I've been dying to meet you. You must be Aunt Kitty. Well, I'm not really his aunt. I just happen to be Irish, too. Oh, and I live a few doors down. Mike says I'm the closest thing to a relative he's gonna get around here. <laughs> Love your shoes. Why, thank you. As I always say, if the shoe fits, it's probably yours. <laughs> now there's a bizarre scenario. What if everybody here felt the way she did, you know, just dying to meet me, praising me before God? <laughs> Mrs. Wagstaff, Lisa. <laughs> Elizabeth. God, imagine that. <laughs>
If I had to spend the rest of my life on a desert island and I could only take one thing with me, it would be that sexy animal package. Oh, Cody. So sensitive, so gentle. In my day, there was one word for a man like him. Charming. He can charm the birds right out of the trees. The man is pure genius. Lisa should listen to him. God's great gift to the human race, hallelujah. The man is an absolute poem. Amen. Here's to Mr. McKenzie, a model of sophistication and elegance. <laughs> you are such a card, Cody. <laughs> You don't live with him. He's a son of a bitch. Now, just hold on. There's no place in a man's fantasy for his wife. I haven't heard from everybody yet. Cody McKenzie is so dreamy. Why don't you ask him to the prom? Why don't you ask him to the prom? Why don't you, you fag? You're the fag. You're probably wearing the dress. Shut up! Come on! Guys! The sight of him, his touch, his smell makes me moist. Cody McKenzie makes my nipples hard, rock hard. The man makes my nipples hard, rock hard. Mama! Cody McKenzie makes my nipples rock hard. They're right. I never noticed. He is the best. No, yes, no, yes. Oh, take me. Cody! Oh, Cody! Oh. Reality rears its ugly head. So, what do you do at Fish Box Skinner and Blute? Well, I really try not to let work interfere with my social life, uh, but they pay me, so, well, I handle public affairs. <laughs> Michael told me you two were working on something together? Yeah, I've got this really great idea for a cartoon. Wow, a cartoon? How cool. What's it about? It's about my life and all the idiots I have to deal with on a daily basis. Ah, oh, so you're an artist. No, an artist is someone who is starving in their 20s. I'm 32. I'm a deadbeat. <laughs> yeah, he's an artist, all right. A bullshit artist. Fertilizer of choice for growing fun. <laughs> Oh, having a great time then. Yeah, just trying to pick up this pretty young thing. <laughs> Forget it, she's got standards. Oh, that's all right. They're very low. <laughs> well, boys, excuse me. I think I'm going to go say hello to Mrs. Bedwetter. It was really nice to meet you, Cody. You are definitely one of a kind. <laughs> it's nice to meet you too, Aunt Kitty. Hope to see you again soon. <laughs> hey, listen, I heard what Tweedledee and Tweedledum said. Um, I don't want to embarrass you or... You know, especially Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> Wake up, Cody. I know her. She's not who you think she is. But I'm in love with her, man. I must be. God, I can't stop thinking about her. And her shit stinks like everyone else's. Cody, Liz is not some bimbo you can con into the sack and then drop and go back to your wife. Those feelings you have for Elizabeth, you should give them to Judy payoff will be huge. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I'd probably screw it up anyway. And yeah, nothing in the world's perfect. Most is ridiculous. You taught me that. Really? Uh-huh. <laughs> Listen, um, some advice you should take home? And what's that? Do you ever make love to Jenny in the shower? <laughs> no. You should, though. She loves it. <laughs> Shut up, Pinhead! Hey, you still think you're gonna get laid off? There's a 90% chance I won't have a job next week. Man, what are you gonna do? I mean, you're getting married, you're moving. You and Jenny like to live well. I mean, your idea of fast food is Chateaubriand in the microwave. And I kiss my boss's ass to keep this job. Your boss is Elizabeth. So? That's punishment? Come on, I'll kiss it for you, man. I'll kiss your hairy ass if you let me kiss hers. Maybe losing this job is the kick in the ass I need. I've gotten lazy on a steady paycheck. 
Hell, the fish doesn't know what to do with me anyway. I've had more positions in the last year than Marilyn Chambers has had in a lifetime. Hey, I thought Jimmy Douglas was gonna be here tonight. You didn't tell Jim about the party, did you? I haven't seen him. Well, don't. He wasn't invited. Why not? He's one of your best friends. Remember when Elizabeth was made director of public relations? A lot of people were considered for the job. Jim was one of them. He was perfect for it. Well, she's good. Yeah, she's good. Jim is better. The company needed a woman in management. Her daddy happens to be a big client. I thought it was best not to put the two together in a situation like this. It could be nasty. Jim is pissed. Hey, look, I didn't know, but are you and Jim still cool? Yeah, sure, but we avoid the subject. Anyway, just don't say anything. All right. Um, I heard that you and Jenny might be moving east. We talked about it. You're always talking about Richmond, Boston, and Maine. I know you're gonna leave, man. Anything's possible. If I'm gonna be broke, it may as well be someplace I like. I hate it here. I hate to see you leave, but you're my brother, man, and I love you. You don't need me. You have Judy. We won't lose touch no matter what happens. Yes, we will. You, you remember E.T.? Sure. I'll be right here. <laughs> <laughs> Have I lost you to another man? Oh, don't worry. He doesn't even appeal to me. <laughs> Look, he doesn't shave under his arm. But you do, and that's why you're my one true love, honey bunny. Kissing Mr. O'Malley all alone under the moonlight seems a little questionable. It's okay. He's over 18. Besides, any man who is truly confident in his sexuality can touch another man without worrying about it. <laughs> If I was to go to the other side, it would be with Widow Mikey. <laughs> but, but my armpits, my legs. Hey, don't forget that nose. <laughs> but love means never having to say you shave. <laughs> hey, Elizabeth. Yes? What's your opinion of women who fake their orgasms? <laughs> I wouldn't know. I've never had to. Well, I've only faked a few myself, but they're very realistic. I mean, I believe them. <laughs> Yes, honey. Could you please come into the dining room? It's Jerry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, mm, come on, baby. I said, mm, come on, move with me. Come on. I said, hmm. I said, hi. I said, ho. I said, he. I said, hmm. I said, hi. I said, Jerry. ho. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Move it down. Move it down. Come Jerry. on, move it down. Move it down, man. Jerry, maybe come you on. should lie down. I am working on it, baby. Jerry, come on. Come on. Uh, let her go. I, Jerry, let me uh, get you some coffee. I don't want to let go. I don't want to have any coffee. I want you to leave me alone. Let me think for myself for a change. It's okay. It's okay. He's not feeling well. I feel fine. Leave me alone. Somebody get him off of me. He's trashed. Elizabeth. <clears throat> Jerry, please don't cause a scene. God damn it, people. Let's party. What are you looking at me for? Get your dead asses in gear. Come on, it's showtime. No, it's HBO. <laughs> He's had a little too much to drink. Uh, please excuse us. I can make up my own excuses. Leave me alone. So do I have to play the perfect host to satisfy your perfect wishes, your perfect party? I'm sick of your perfection and your goddamn pate. By the way, pate is French for spam. I'm sorry I'm not one of your, your fans like Laughing Boy. Ooh, I've insulted the queen. <laughs> Jerry, they hear you. Come on and let me put you to bed. <laughs> Go to bed? Going to bed with you is like playing Trivial Pursuit. I never get the wedge. <laughs> you expect to see this, did you? Mr. Elizabeth losing it. It happens all the time. You know what it's like living with a perfect woman? It sucks. You all think she's so goddamn wonderful. She's a bitch, just like all the rest. You know, you pay for it one way or another, and I'm all out of self-respect. I don't want a bronze goddess. I want a woman. Even Miss America takes a crap and picks her nose every now and then. Liz hasn't had a crap since 1971. That's why she's such a bitch.
You know, I, I'm, I'm just sick. I'm sick of being, being, being controlled and planned and plotted. I mean, I just want to do something. I just want to show up at the movies and see something. I want to do something spontaneous. I don't mean like spontaneous tomorrow at 2 o'clock. That's not spontaneous. I mean really spontaneous. I want to go to the movies. I don't want to see a chick flick. I don't want to see the Madison County crummy. I want to see a movie with people getting shot and killed. I, it's okay if, if, if Meryl Streep's in the movie as long as she dies. That's all I'm saying, okay? I want to see a movie, a real movie. I want to shake up our lives a little bit. I want flesh and blood. Not robo bitch. You know what she is, folks? She is just a shiny piece of glass masquerading as a diamond. That's what she is. A shiny piece of glass just masquerading as a diamond. Do you hear me? I want a drink. Somebody give me a drink. Give me a, just a double gin and ice and something. I just... There's plenty to eat and drink, everybody. Don't worry about Jerry. He's, uh, he's been working too hard. He'll be all right tomorrow. Your ideal woman brought to you by Jerry Sheridan, a man who knows her best. Now back to you, Marv. Surprised? <laughs> Blown away. I actually respect Jerry now. <laughs> I just thought he was a spineless puppet. If I had flipped out like that, they'd have thrown me out with the rest of the garbage. You were blacklisted before you walked in the door. They tolerate you because of me. <laughs> it's not fair. Well, he's part of the club. Tomorrow it will all be forgotten and no one will ever bring it up again. Well, I for one know how Elizabeth feels. I mean, you've said worse about me. But she's different. I mean, they're different. The only thing that separates them from us is how much they pay the IRS. And they press their blue jeans. I mean, she never lost her cool. I mean, she really is extraordinary. What else could she do? I do not understand your fascination with her. I don't. I mean, sure, I admire Elizabeth Sheridan, but oh, I even like her. You're damn lucky to have me. Your fantasy woman would dump you in 10 minutes if she lived with you. <laughs> Who wouldn't? <laughs> You're probably right. I mean... Any woman might love it in small doses, but eventually she'd throw up. It's like a roller coaster ride. It's all fun and exciting at first, but then, bleh. I don't know. Maybe I find roller coasters a turn on. All those ups and downs. <laughs> Let's drop him. Hey, I'm getting married in a month. I want in on all the dirt. Oh, you're not going to hear it from me. I value my life. <laughs> I don't believe it. For the first time, you're actually walking away from a chance to pontificate? <laughs> Maybe it's love. Maybe it's good taste. Or you know you're wrong. I know I need another drink. Hey, hey, oh. take it easy on the liquor. Liquor? I hardly know her. <laughs> 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 it's time I paid some attention to Jenny. Mike's beginning to look a lot like Barney Five. What? It's <laughs> 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 Mother, it's that man. I see that you are still here. I'm glad to hear that you can still see. Another drink, I suppose. You are sinning, Mr. McKenzie. Why, you're the biggest disgrace to God I know. Wagstaff, you astound me. I can only imagine that your great perceptions come from your advanced age and immaculate misconceptions. How did someone like you get himself invited to such an otherwise fine gathering? I've been wondering that myself. I guess the queen needs her fool. Why are you so obnoxious? Why do you drink so much? Why are you so mean and hateful? I know, I know, I know. Why Cody McKenzie? I guess I'm some freak of nature. You obviously cannot help the way you are, and I forgive you. How nice. You forgive me for the way I am. You are simply unenlightened. I disapprove your behavior, but I'm sure there's a place and perhaps even a reason for people like you. God gave them eyes, but they cannot see. I know a hypocrite when I see one. You only disgust me. Mission accomplished. You, you, you should read my book. 
I don't want to read your goddamn book. Well, I never. And you used the Lord's name in vain. No, I didn't. I used the little G. <sighs> Marge Simpson called. She wants her hair back. Don't you think you've had enough? What's too much for one may not be enough for another. I think you've had enough. That is, Roland is very upset. Stay out of my business and stay away from Lisa. If you want to ruin her life, you've got an excellent start. She sees through you like a pair of cheap pantyhose, man, and she'll run. <laughs> You're filling her head with ridiculous ideas. Oh, I didn't know Lisa's head needed any filling in. How about a little self-respect or trivial things like happiness, honesty, fun? To you, she's just a trophy. Something to impress your friends. Well, mister, I don't buy your brand of bullshit and neither does she. But I wish you both the benefit of time to avoid making a mistake. Well, what you wish doesn't mean anything. Then why the hell are you making such a big deal about it? I couldn't care less. In fact, I'd rather not think about you at all. But every time I turn around, there you are. Loud, obnoxious, crude, meddling. You're a bookman, aren't you? Bookman? Yeah, everything by the book. Standards, regulations, procedures. I'm organized. I bet you make Lisa fill out a form before you make love to her. Do you have any communicable diseases? Who have you slept with since puberty and what are their incomes and religious affiliations? Most practical position? Doggy style so you can both watch CNN. <laughs> Duration of the sex act. Can you measure that in nanoseconds? <laughs> Bookman! I bet you rate her performance, too. Orgasm on a 1 to 10 scale. What would you do if she rated you? Look, Mr. Cody McKenzie, for some reason, Michael sees something in you that we fail to recognize. I'm sure you have some quality, however low, but we don't approve of your behavior at all. I think we've been very tolerant. The point is, we think you ought to leave. Now. <laughs> Come on, guys, where's the love? I don't think you get the message. We insist you leave. Too bad. Your wife seems to be a lovely lady. What could she possibly see in you? She hardly sees me at all. <laughs> but I'm a dynamite lady despite my short fuse. Best two minutes of her life. Hey, but be careful, she's a tough crack tonight. <laughs> For the last time, are you leaving or not? If Elizabeth wants me to, it's her house. Well, then we'll take it up with her. I'm sure she's just as annoyed by your presence as we are. It's been a pleasure getting to know you, not. Shit. What was that all about? Seems like I've pissed off some of Mike's friends. I knew this would happen. You know, not everyone is so entertained by what you find amusing. Now you're probably gonna be stuck in that same stupid job, in that same stupid desk, in that same stupid little department forever. I didn't come here to get a promotion. I mean, why should I care about impressing these people? I don't even like them. Just level off, okay? Think about other people's feelings. You can be such a wonderful person, Cody, and then you turn into a monster and you scare people off. I never know what you're gonna say or do next. Neither do I. I don't make plans that far in advance. Why do you have to be such a rebel? I'm not a rebel. A rebel believes in something. I, I just say what I say when I say it, then it's said. Do me a favor. Next time you say what you say and do what you do, think about what you're saying and who you're saying it to. OK. Let's go screw in the lawn. Okay. What news do you bring me of the fellow Cody McKenzie? A scurvy knave, your highness. A pox upon us, my queen. We grow weary of him. He threw his pants at me. He loves us not, highness. And through his actions, he has insulted you, my queen, in all manner of vile impudence. He maketh a fool of the enchantress Wagstaff, and he corrupteth my lady Lisa with his ridiculous babblings. When we most agreeably requested he take leave, he heard us not. 
I suffer this fool not gladly. And I protest, I protest strongly his company under your noble roof. What do you ask of me? Banish him from your kingdom. Did the bumpkin not say before us both that he would gladly go, should our queen wish it so? Yea, verily, he did say it. Sir Roland, Squire Sidney, while I do appreciate your concern, thou dost protest too much. Take it, Cody, with a pinch of salt, and lightly thus. He is amusing, is he not? <laughs> Nay, not to me. The bounder has neither taste nor manners not. Why is he here, I ask? He is not of noble birth. He parades before us as an infidel at some pagan ritual. He is no more than a colored serf, born on the wrong side of the blanket, my queen. Mind if we play through? This revel is for Duke O'Malley and the Lady Jennifer. Verily, the betrothed requested his presence. I rather like him. I find the contrast most interesting. Consider the evil spell he hath cast upon King Gerald? Uh, Gerald? Jerry. Dost thou imagine his highness bewitched so, if not for the wicked jester? The king battles his own demons. Not too well, I fear. His head was clouded by the fruits of Marcus. It will all be forgotten in the morrow. I suggest thou cleanse thy minds of it. Immediately. My queen! I am vexed by your forbearance. His mouth offends your subjects. Hack it off! I am convinced thou art making mountains out of anthills. Good night, and fare thee well. Uh, excuse me. That's okay, just do it a little slower next time. Can you believe it? He's eavesdropping. Actually, I was looking for the toilet. I guess that was you that I smelled. Well, it's the next door. Be careful. It's wet. Somebody was sick. Now you know someone was listening. Watch him. He'll probably steal your towels. Champagne? Sure. I've tried everything else. Well, I uh, hope this doesn't kill me. I'm sure you've had worse. Drink Thunderbird from my baby bottle. Switched Everclear when I was nine. Well, this is considerably better finished than either of those. Oh, of course. Nothing but the best for Elizabeth <laughs> Sheridan. <laughs> Here's to your health and my lack of it. Cheers. Yeah, we sure have passed a lot of water over the years. How poetic. Hey, listen. I'm sorry about those two. It must have been something I said or they ate. Boy, you thoroughly pissed them off. Little old me. Uh-huh. I don't get it. I'm not exactly thrilled about those two pinheads either, but I'm not going around making a lot of noise about it. No, as far as I'm concerned, it's just a silly misunderstanding. Don't worry about it so I can stay. Of course. Listen, have you had a grand tour of the house yet? Your natural habitat, not yet. Well, you've seen the living room, so... Follow me. If I could afford this. It's for sale. Oh man, imagine that, me living in the same house Elizabeth Sheridan used to live in, where she ate, slept, bathed. Enjoyed her private fantasies. My fantasies are just ordinary. Pretty dull, actually. There is nothing ordinary about you. Oh, come on, Cody. I'm nothing special. Yes, you are to me. Uh, Cody. 
Cody. Cody. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't believe I did that. I'm sorry. I'm so I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did that. It's just that you're so beautiful and I'm just a joke. I've been building up to that for a long time and now that I've done it, I feel like an idiot. It's okay, really. I'm flattered. I, I thought it was um, sweet. Sweet? Is that all, no threat? Well, do you want to be a threat or my friend? I don't want to be patted on the head like some naughty little boy. Elizabeth, I am so in love with you. It's pitiful. It really hurts. Cody, you're not in love with me. You're in love with someone or something you've created in your imagination. I do love you. The look, the style, the voice. Everything about you is perfect. Yeah, well, if I'm so perfect, why did my husband come in blue tonight? You don't really know me, Cody. No one does. That's the way it is in my mind. Exactly, in your mind. But it's a fantasy. You put me on some kind of pedestal. Where you belong. No, it's too high, I'll fall one day. You won't fall, you can't. Yes, I can. Look, I know you, Cody, a lot better than you think. You get bored easily. I mean, I might be able to hold your attention for a while, but then you'd want someone else, and then someone else. Don't you see? But I think you're the one. <laughs> Maybe for tonight. What about a year from now? Or even six months? God, you change women like you change your underwear. Hopefully, you change your underwear often. Elizabeth, you're different. I've heard that before. You know, when I was a little girl, contrary to what people may think, we didn't have much back then. But my one treasure, my most favorite thing, was this storybook album of Cinderella. You know, it was this record, and it had these pictures you followed along the story with. God, I played that thing constantly. I think I wore it out. It was the most wonderful story about a girl who had absolutely nothing. And this handsome, chivalrous man came along and made everything so right. Magical. And he took her away, and they lived happily ever after. They shouldn't tell little girls that story. Because it's a lie. Sometimes your prince You know, at first, they think you're so perfect. I mean, you can't do anything wrong. And they try so hard to capture your heart until they have it. And then I guess they just don't have to try anymore. I guess it's a chase. Men only seem to want what they don't have. Believe me, Lisa is only one of many. And it makes you so tired inside. I'm so unbearably tired. So you fill your life with other things. And you, uh, you try to be perfect at everything else, I guess. Cody, I'm just like everybody else. No, you're not. Yes, I am. I am no different than anyone. I'm human. I make the same mistakes. I pay the same bills. I have bodily functions. I fart. God, I can't believe I just said that. 
Well, all right, fine. There, it's out. Now you know. Elizabeth Sheridan passes gas. Kind of ruins the sexy image, huh? You know, you wouldn't even know what to do with me if I offered myself to you. Oh, yes, I would. Cody, you are married to Judy, and I am married to Jerry. Do you love him? I am married to Jerry. You love Judy, so love Judy. Give your infamous passion to her. She deserves it, not me. God knows she loves you. You can see it in her eyes. Just take a second to look. Don't ever take her for granted, Cody. I still feel like an idiot. But <laughs> maybe knowing that nothing could ever happen between us will make it that much more special. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but, but seriously, <laughs> thank you. For what? For listening. It all sounds pretty stupid out loud. Call it nocturnal admission. You know what, Cody? You do things the rest of us only wish we had the guts to do. Those people out there that pretend to hate you, they're just jealous. I know I am. Now, let's go look at the rest of the house. walking that tightrope again. Maybe I'll see the house some other time. It might be more impressive when my eyes are working. Okay. Where have you been? Business. She was advising me against unreasonable speculations. You're really trashed. How did you get that way? Swallowing. I think we better be going. Hey, hey, I was just getting started. I think I did. <laughs> Too bad you can't stay. Well, Cody's tired, and we have an awful lot to do tomorrow. Yes. I thought we were going to your parents' house tomorrow. I'd rather stay here. I'd rather stay anywhere. As you can see. I know. Well, thank you so much for coming. We'll have to do this again real soon in the distant future. When he's party trained. <laughs> Mikey, I'd do anything for you, man. I'd even make love to your wife. Oh, well, we'll get together next week then. <laughs> Bye, Mikey. Bye. Oh, good body every night. I hope I was fun while I lasted. Keys, 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 keys. Wait a minute. What? 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 Nothing. it by that much.
on, Lisa, let's go. Get your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape. Lisa, wait! You bastard! Sister's mad. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Always assume coat and tie. It's much more sophisticated to fuck me, fuck me, fuck me. <laughs> Cody, I'm oh, sorry. Mm. Cody, you are married to Jared. Cut. Cut. <laughs> what do you mean Esperanza can't come? We have to have her. Well, the party will be ruined without an ethnic hostess. a man from my little hometown church. His name wasn't, oh, I'll never forget this as long as I live. His name was Bob. And he corrupteth my lady Lisa with his ridiculous babblings. When we most agreeably requested he take leave, he heard us not. <laughs> He threw his pants at me. He threw his pants at me. In my day, there was one word for a man like him. va 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 boom His sight of him, his smell, his touch makes me moist. The sight of him. Are you ready? Are you ready? It would be that sexy animal package. Oh. Holding. <sighs> what do you do with fish box skinner and take a second? Sorry. What do you do with fish box skinner and bloat? Do it again, blue. Blute. What do you do with fish box? Okay. Cody McKenzie is so dreamy. Why don't you ask him a prom? Why don't you ask him to the prom? Why don't you fag? You're a fag, you're going Shut to the prom with him. Are you gonna buy, are you gonna wear the tux or the dress? Stop! Yo! 
Who is this? Duty. Don't ever call me again.